Alright, welcome to another video, and before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank all the Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names you see scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, they make this financially possible, and without you, I probably wouldn't be here making videos, so thank you. Alright, welcome back to another video. Uh, so today we're going to be taking the swordfish out for a flight. Um, I decided I just wanted to take it out to the river. It's been a while since we flew out that way. So uh, as you can see here, we're going to take off from the runway here at home and we're going to fly out to a point to the east, mostly east, a little bit south of east of here. But you can see my turnaround point out over the river there is kind of what I was aiming for. And if we measure roughly from where we take off to about where we turn around, it's just over four miles. 4.15 is what I'm kind of measuring right here. Um... But yeah, that's the plan. We're going to take off and fly out uh, roughly along this path and turn around over the river and go back. And I kind of like flying this path out here. As you can see, for, there is a stretch where there's a lot of wooded area that we cross. But most of it is over open fields. And even the, the section of woods there that we cross, there's always a field within reach to ditch in. There's the one out on the riverbank and then there's the other clear field out in the middle of those woods that will be kind of to the south of us there for a part and we also have the fields in the same spot right there we can kind of ditch out to the north if we need to and then back towards home it's all open fields that way so it's pretty safe way to fly out there and kind of better chances of recovering airplanes should we ever happen to ditch one out there but in all my years of flying FPV we've never had to ditch one yet but like I always say even if you're not expecting it it's good to be prepared for it so uh, let's go ahead and get rid of all this and we'll get on with the flight all right, so you can see we're taking off now. We're going to take off in uh, auto takeoff with RG plane. We'll take off flight mode, kind of the same thing. But we're going to launch and let the airplane loiter here for just a bit while it gets a read on the airspeed. You can see my wind speed down there was reading really high. And once it starts its first uh, lap around the takeoff point here, it kind of settles down and calculates the actual wind speed. So we don't have an airspeed sensor on board on this build at least. So uh, it just kind of calculates all that based on the differences in ground speed versus heading and all that. So we finished that and now we're switch over to cruise mode and we're kind of uh, getting on heading that we need to be. And I know by looking at the map and everything, like I said, I knew kind of the course I wanted to fly. I should aim right out over that shed that's kind of right off the nose right there, kind of at the end of the dark green field. And that'll put us on a path to that kind of uh, waypoint that we wanted to, to shoot for out there. So you can see now I'm just kind of uh, holding some elevator and doing a slow climb, which basically just requests an altitude increased in cruise mode. So we're going to climb right up to 400 feet or so. We'll stop the climb just before 400, just before 400, so that we uh, stay down below the limits where we're supposed to be. And you see we're there now. We stopped right at 399, let it settle back down. So if I remember right, it should hold right around between 395 and 400, right in that range. And we're just kind of looking around now. Nice sunset over the tail. And I'm noticing a little bit of uh, jello in the video, like I might have a little bit of vibration going on. I probably need to double check those props. I haven't really checked them again since I put them on there. Now you can see the antenna kind of vibrating a little bit and looking off this side. So. Again, you can kind of see that jello looking over the wing. So it's, like I said, it's a little bit of vibration going on that wasn't there that I don't remember before anyway. So I'll probably have to uh, take a look at that at some point in the future. But the airplane's flying great. Feels really locked in and smooth. And you can see it's estimating about an eight and a half mile an hour wind or so. Which is pretty accurate. There was a little bit of wind on the ground and a little bit more at altitude that it wasn't really gusty or anything. You can see how smooth the airplane's flying. It's pretty well just locked in and cruising. Feels like a much larger airplane than it is. Um, and 
that wind is kind of hitting us from the south, mostly from the south, a little bit southeast. But you can kind of see it kind of correcting its course, doing little course, change, uh, course corrections along the way to uh, adjust heading for, for that crosswind. Um, I kind of spotted these uh, white birds down here flying over the woods. I was kind of watching them down below us and just above the treetops right off the motor there. this time of day, late in the evening like this, they usually do kind of uh, fly back to wherever they're going to roost at. I don't really know where they're going. If, I don't know why they fly from, from one patch of woods to another one to go and roost at night, but I guess they all they go back and roost at the same, same spot every night, I assume. And like I said, looking at the map, you can see we're over that wooded area now that's a lot of woods out here, and, and it's pretty pretty heavy undergrowth and everything out there. If, if the airplane went down in the woods out here, I would probably have a hard time recovering it. There's a good chance I might not ever find it. But like I said, we always have those fuels within reach. And that's one reason I like to fly at higher altitude, I guess. And I say higher altitude, it's, we're still under 400 feet. But um, back in the early days when it was allowed and it wasn't regulated like it is now, I, I would even fly higher than this. So I would have an extended glide range if I needed it, if I lost power or something, I'd have a better chance of finding a safe spot to land and, and reaching it. But 400 is still a little bit higher than I typically fly when I'm closer to home. I like flying down lower to see stuff on the ground, but like I said, I like having altitude out here because altitude is your friend and it buys you time and distance should you have to glide and find somewhere to land. And it also uh, improves your signal reception for both the uh, control link, which in this case is crossfire for now and uh, the HD video system, which of course is Walksnail. So being up high like that kind of uh, lets your signals get, get through better. Instead of having uh, obstacles and everything in the ground, on the ground, interfering with it. And you see at this point of the flight right here, from between that last field that we were flying along and the next one coming up, there's still a fair bit of woods out here, a pretty good stretch that if we did lose power, um, then you might get lucky and shoot for one of those little clearings like right under the motor right down there. I wouldn't want to land it in that, that kind of little valley through the woods there. It's actually an old bayou that cuts through there. It's dry most of the time. You can see a little stream of water in the bottom of it right now, but it's it's real heavy growth and difficult to get out there and, and uh, to kind of trek through there. Like you would probably not find the airplane if you put it down in there and there is some roadways and like I said those little little patches that are cleared by hunting stands and things like that that you might accidentally be able to put it down into one of those and better your chances of recovering it but I would still probably either turn around and go back and head for the large open field or at this point we're closer to the one ahead of us I would just fly straight ahead and aim for this one and just put it down in an open field like that so that you would probably have a pretty good chance of finding it just fly out there with uh, something else and look from overhead and spot it. And of course you'd have all your last known coordinates and everything like that to work from too. But anyway, that's just kind of a worst case scenario. It's like I said, I don't expect any of that to happen and it never has in all my years of flying out here. But I still like to uh, just even just think through it hypothetically, like what would happen in a worst case. And if it ever does happen, then you're going to be prepared for it. And you'll have a better chance of working through it, coming out successful. But you can see here we've reached the uh, the last open field that we're going to fly over, coming up on the river. So at this point, I had kind of planned on just hitting the river bank right here and then turning kind of north, northeast and flying up the river a bit until we hit the four mile mark and then turning around to come back. But once I got here, I just kind of overflew the middle of the field and kind of trended a little bit north and just headed for the river out here. And uh, I think we hit four miles over the river before I turned around. I don't remember exactly. But I decided to uh, just get out over this part of the river and then turn back south to make a turn around and turn back to the right. You see right now, once we hit the river bank, I kind of turned a little bit north up the river. And like I said, when you got time to turn around instead of 
do a left hand turn and flying back along the north edge of that field I turned back around over the river and flew back over the middle of the field again you, know, you can see how calm the water is down there and it's pretty pretty much glass smooth there's no, no ripples or anything like that from wind if there is none down there and the water is actually pretty low you can kind of see all those sandbars sticking out along the, uh, the river banks there which is pretty typical for this time of year. Sometimes we either have a winter thaw or and kind of like the spring flood, but we're a little late for a spring flood this year. So everything's pretty low and kind of drying up. And you can see now we're gonna kind of head back for home. And if you watch my home arrow, I did kind of fly a little bit north of a course that would put us directly home. I was mostly just kind of flying, looking at the sun, kind of putting the sunset over the nose there. And we flew like that for a bit over the open field, which kind of hit it for that corner of the field. And then you'll see later, eventually, we kind of corrected the course and turned back for home. A more direct route to home, at least. Um, I don't know if you've noticed it yet or not, but I was kind of watching while I was flying and I'm still kind of noticing it now. My satellite count on this flight and the HTOP, neither one looked very good. They usually, I'll take off with anywhere from 8 to 10, 12, sometimes satellites, depending on what it is. It differs every day from one day to the, to the next, whatever. Uh, but I'll usually take off with a lock right around there, and then once I'm in the air, it quickly improves and gets right up close to 18, 20, and eventually like over 23, 24 satellites. This is the, the walk snow brand that did uh, WS-181 that I like. I have it in a couple of my airplanes now. And they these usually perform flawlessly. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with this particular flight. Um, I've even pointed out with this, this airplane, this GPS unit in the past, more than once, how well the GPS does work. But for some reason, it never really looked good. And you, you can see it kind of the satellite count just kind of bounces around and the ACOP gets pretty high sometimes, higher than I like. So I'll probably need to look into that, I'll double check, um, make sure no settings or anything like that change, make sure it's still using all the constellations and maybe it was just a bad day for a GPS, I don't know, but uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that in the future. You can see on this uh, return flight, I was kind of looking down at this other clearing. This clearing doesn't actually show on the uh, Google Maps. They just did this in the last couple of years since, you know, after the last Google images were taken, satellite images or whatever. But I wanted to uh, fly kind of close to that and see if it would be a viable spot to ditch the airplane if we ever needed to. And it is, and it just it kind of gives us another option on the way back. You can see it's pretty well clear cut down there and big enough to land in. It has a nice road to drive out to it. Now, I believe there is some gates to uh, get out there. It's not a public road. But it would be pretty easy to get permission if I needed to, I think. And, uh, like I said, we still have these fields off uh, the right side here, off the right of the nose. We have these open fields. And that other field out over the left wing that we kind of can't see, just off out of the left side of the image. Same one we we're talking, out, talking about on the way out. So there's plenty of options, plenty of places to ditch out here if you should need to. Um, and that's one reason I don't often fly past the river that four miles is kind of my cutoff point For the most part at that point. I'm usually happy of I've flown far enough satisfied and uh, If I should ever land an airplane across that river it, I'd have to drive all the way around To cross the bridge and drive back up to it and find it. It would, it would just be a, kind of a big deal Now there is a bridge right out off the wing tip that we're looking over right now that I could drive around through town and go drive that way and come back. It's not terribly far out of the way, but it's kind of, it would still be kind of kind of an ordeal that I would rather avoid if I if I can. That's why most of my long range flights, really longer ones, that I typically don't do anymore. But early on, some of the longer stuff, I flew south and kind of followed the river and stayed on this side of it, on the west side of it. And there's mostly open fields down that way. It, it's a better to take, I think, if you want to really push for distance. But 
yeah, we're flying back. We're getting over some familiar territory now. You see the the uh, cow pastures down below. The cows huddled up in the corner there. And the bridges in the bayou and everything that we usually fly over. There's the sheds down below. We're kind of splitting them right now, flying between them. The big one off the right side and the little one off the left. And you see I decided to kind of let it hold that 400 feet altitude all the way back until it was time to descend to set up on my landing. I kind of approached this one as if I were flying a real airplane and I was coming in to land at my airport, aka my backyard, and uh, just kind of played around with it like that. And I wanted to uh, just start my descent. You can see I did now. I went ahead and cut power. Actually, I didn't cut power. I'm still in cruise mode. I just kind of pushed the nose down. So it, the, the airplane did throttle back, but that's the autopilot doing all that for me. I'm just pushing the nose down, which is not necessarily controlling the pitch angle. It's just requesting that the autopilot lose altitude. So that's how I started my descent. And you can see I'm kind of heading over close to the tree line here. And that's so I can turn and get lined up on my runway. I'm coming at it kind of from an angle. Uh, but you'll see at some point here pretty soon we switched back to fly by wire eight which is always my preferred method to land as far as stabilized modes go and so we've done that now so we're flying fly by wire a and now i have manual control over my throttle so i can uh, control my rate of descent and watch my airspeed and everything and just kind of make sure we clear the weeds in the field over the threshold which you've done now so we'll go ahead and cut power and start our flare and go for a nice smooth landing and made it just past the shop which works for me so i guess that's going to be the end of this flight hopefully it was enjoyable hopefully you enjoyed the narration and the flight and uh, i guess keep an eye out for what's to come so thank you all for watching and i will see you all in the next ones